So, Dan, we just saw a movie, Hardcore Henry. What did you think? It was a good movie. I did not hate it. Nor did I, but you know who didn't enjoy it? Everyone else. That was in our theater. Our theater was packed to the brim with us. Yeah, it was bizarre. We've always made this joke that we would love to go to a movie where it's just the two of us in the theater so we can talk and yell at each other. Well... Hardcore Henry was that film. And uh, we didn't talk or yell, really, at all. No, because we were intrigued by the uh, first-person action. Because the movie was not bad. No, I mean, it's getting average reviews, which is fine. I mean, it was not... We'll put it like this. The gimmick of the first person is what you're really going to see this movie for. And uh, it does it well. Yeah, I guess if you're sensitive to motion sickness and all that other jazz this isn't the movie for you but if you're able to no. play a modern video game this will be your movie this is call of duty without playing call of duty it's... i would like to, i'm going to title this video hardcore henry literally video game colon the movie because it has missions like a video game it looks just like a video game it has video game sensibilities you can get health packs and recharge yep. your energy, just like yep. a video game. It was a video game. And if you don't like the analogy, it's like a video game. Imagine Crank through Jason Statham's eyes. Which would be an awesome movie also. True, except there's no fucking Amy Smart, which is kind of sad. Uh, but there was a strip club. Yes, and there was uh, there was like one set of boobs in the whole strip club that was exposed. That were exposed. And they were also trying to unzip your pants. Which is cool. Yeah, hey. I don't really have any actual complaints about this movie. It's not a perfect movie. Far from it. Oh, no. Oh, but it's much, much, much better than Batman. Well, it's better than Batman v Superman by a lot. But that isn't saying a whole hell of a lot. Yeah, if anybody listens to us, which they should, they know that uh, Batman v Superman met. You know, uh, we actually had a fan tell us that we helped them enjoy Batman v Superman more because we help to temper their expectations. Well, that's what we do. You're welcome, America. And Canada. And parts of Europe. And, you know, other places that might watch us. I don't, I don't know. I don't I, know all you people. Anybody from Croatia listens to us, though. Well, they still don't have internet, so it's fine. People of Croatia, when you um, do get internet, please listen to World Class Bullshitters. And, I don't want this uh, to be an empty plea. And like it. Yeah. You will and, like it. And speaking of, that fan is actually DWS6X2. You're so, welcome, D -D 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 2 That he has said that. And he also thinks Star Wars is dead, thanks to Episode 7. But we're not here to bitch about Star Wars. We'll save that for every other video that thousands of people will watch. Because it's what we do. We're here to talk about Hardcore Henry. Hardcore Holly. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, the movie starts out with an awesome credit scene. So uh -huh. Some really gross 80s music. And I love 80s music, but this is like the grossest 80s music possible. The, this opening scene made me really laugh at every single thing. Every single person that died, I laughed at it. And it was beautiful. Yeah, like there's a scene late in the movie where a guy has a grenade thrown at him and blows his arm and his leg off, which is gruesome. But there's the Wilhelm scream, which makes it funny. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's gold. Yes, um... Basically, this guy wakes up, he can't speak the entire film, uh, he's getting ready to learn how to speak when some superhero villain guy busts through the wall, Kool-Aid Man style, and oh, yeah. fucks up some shit and kills some scientists. Then him and his wife escape in an escape pod, she gets kidnapped by a bunch of mercenaries, and essentially it's his mission to save her throughout the film. And on his journey... He meets Charlotte Copley about 15 different times. And each one has a different personality. Who is your favorite Charlotte Copley uh, reincarnation? I kind of liked the hippie one, but I was also partial to the cocaine-sniffing one. Oh my god, that dude is like the friend you want to have. And also the friend you don't want to have. He's the friend you want to have for like a week, and then you want him to either OD, or you just want him to forget about you. I think Most my likely favorite, OD. My favorite might have been the old British uh, soldier. Oh, I loved him too. That was funny. I loved when he uh, uses RPG 
and crossed his leg over to shoot that fucking car. <laughs> he looks so fancy. Yeah, uh, speaking of looks, this movie looked pretty damn good. There was only one scene in the film. Ironically, we both looked at each other at the same time and was like, that looks bad. Um, one, one scene where you can see everything is terrible CG. I said to Dan in the theater, Dan, this is where the budget ran dry. This was the last shot of the film. That was. It, they had to redo it, and that's why it was so bad looking. That's when you could call it Call of Duty the movie, but Call of Duty actually looks more realistic than the uh, effects in that one scene. Yeah. Take take the one Call of Duty game where you kill everybody in the airport. That's pretty much this scene. Pretty much. Um, Dan, what did you think of Henry's performance? <laughs> I think I did an awesome job as Henry. Yeah, he does not speak once. Um, you you kind of see his face in a reflection. But it was funny, no one is listed as playing Henry. I would like a list of all the people that played Henry. Uh, me. It was just me. Pretty much, if you're white, you could be Henry. And that's literally it. And you have a terrible tattoo going the entire body. Yeah, he had some shit tattoos. But whatever. His robotic arm was cool. It was. I like it. And so besides him, we had uh, a guy named Danila Kozlovsky who played Aiken or Akon. We, we had Russians. Yeah. That's who, that's who this, this movie, Russians. Yeah, this whole movie took place in Russia. It was kind of gray. So whatever. But I don't think the Russian setting hurt it. It definitely made it stood out, but it also made it feel kind of cheap. Yeah, but you know what? Where else are you going to be able to go pro throughout the entire country? True, and not have anybody try to, like, photobomb your movie. Yeah. When your biggest star is Tim Roth, you know you're in for a, a, a slightly above average romp. And when Tim Roth's in the movie two different times for about a minute each? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, his line is essentially, you're a big pussy. And then they flesh that out later in the film. And you hear that line all the time. Yes, you do. People call you pussy way too often. Quit being a pussy. So, uh, Dan, this movie is, it costs $10 million, and it's it's made 7.2. Do you think it'll make its budget back in cinemas? I think it will, because it'll be one of those, hey, here's a movie, let's go watch it. I definitely think it deserves more views than... It got at our theater. <laughs> More than two? Yeah. It's uh, it's it's entertaining. I mean, there were scenes where we were, like, screaming, like, yeah! I mean, it's definitely the most visceral, in-your-face action film, because, like, Doom. Doom it's... is a shit movie, and there's one first-person scene. Just imagine the entire thing is that first-person scene. That first-person scene in Doom was fucking awesome. It was phenomenal. Uh, the rest of the movie is shit. The rest of the movie happened. Um, what else do you have to say about Hardcore Henry? Anything? Uh, not really. Favorite scene before we head out? Uh, when uh, he took the shot of adrenaline and Queen started playing. That was fucking awesome. It, it was almost a ripoff of Shaun of the Dead, but in a good way. But it was still funny. Yeah, that was amazing. There were so many good scenes. I mean, the movie is essentially one good scene. It's one and good it, video game cutscene. And if you've seen the trailer, yeah, you've seen the general outline of the plot like most movies nowadays. But, man, there are some gore shots. Like, okay, obviously spoilers. When you're listening to world-class bullshitters, spoilers abound. So, earmuffs, I don't have a timestamp for it. But there's a Ear, scene where earmuffs, children. There's a scene where he's talking to a guy, and the guy's like, if you don't kill me, I'll tell you. And all of a sudden, this guy gets shot in the head, and everything from his mouth up is gone. <laughs> it yeah. was... With one bullet, his head is cut in half. It was fucking insane. Uh, and then the other gory part that stood out to me, besides the Wilhelm scream, was he's fighting a dude, and he stabs him with a grenade. And all of a sudden, his whole upper body just explodes <laughs> or, or or when he throws the guy into the fan and his body just blows into pieces. Oh, dude, yeah. We were cheering like, oh! It was a bloody-ass movie. This movie definitely earns its moniker hardcore. And it was good. It was balls-to-the-wall action. Um, You know, 
If you're gonna, don't ever take a fucking child to see this movie, <laughs> unless you're the worst. Unless you're a terrible parent, in which case you already know you're taking your child to see this movie. Did you know that this movie was based off some YouTube videos? I actually did. I've watched one of the YouTube videos. I've seen. I think Bad Motherfucker. That's the one I've seen. The same it, people that did that made it, and uh, that's an awesome video. Hey, you know what? I hope that this movie makes, you know. I hope this movie makes about 30 mil, 40 mil. I hope this movie will find its audience. Yes, the novelty is in the way it's shot, but I think it, it has a, an appealing enough story. A good twist at the end, which I won't spoil. And uh, it's unique, but it feels just like a video game. Exactly. I'm surprised this movie wasn't marketed more as, uh, like, at, you know, E3 last year or stuff like that. If, if anything, they should have uh, put it at South by Southwest and... All these other locations where they, you know, have gaming and other nerd culture related things, because this will find its audience one day. Oh, this will be a big. I see more movies coming out like this soon. Do you want more movies to come out like this? I don't want an overflow of them, but I wouldn't mind a couple more. I would want it if it's this violent. Yes, like I said in the theater, I think if they made a horror movie like this, where you. Or your first person view of the killer, that would be insane. Yep, I would. I, I think a Halloween movie. If you really want to reinvent the uh, Halloween franchise or Friday the Thirteenth franchise, this this actually more along the lines of Halloween because Friday the Thirteenth you're just kind of out in the woods and nothing exciting happens. But Halloween would be way way cooler. Halloween would do good with this. So, Dan, on a scale of 1 to 10, 10 being great, 1 being Star Wars Episode 7, The Force Awakens, what would you rate Hardcore Henry? I give it a solid 7.5. I'm going to go slightly below you and give it just a solid 7. I thought it was a good movie. I would definitely watch this again. I can see myself watching this multiple times. I would like an unrated Blu-ray release. How much more gore do you think they could pack in there? Or do you just want to see more tits in that strip club? Uh, yes. Yeah, I'm with you there. I mean, more tits has never heard a film. No. Unless it's Caligula, which doesn't even have a fucking story. Let's not talk about that. Let's not. We will save that for a later date. So, this has been World Class Bullshitters. We saw Hardcore Henry, and we will be back next Thursday night, uploaded on Friday, with some other podcast. We will talk to you then.